Today's reading is from the book of Hebrew, chapter 10, verse 19 to 20, 25. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled with clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed for, with pure water. Let us hold fast to a confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful, and let us con consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Amri. Gathered. Welcomed. Celebrated. Restored. Gathered together. Encouraged. Supported. Loved. Reminded who God is. Hearts awed by his majesty. Eyes seeing fresh. The wonder of grace. Thankful for his awesome, unwavering love. Reminded who I am. And all I have received. Challenged. Equipped. Renewed. Commissioned. Ready. Sent. so tall. <laughs> Good morning everybody. Over the past few weeks we've been looking at how we experience and how we are on our front lines. We've looked at how we make all the difference in the world, whoever we are, whatever we do, wherever we are. We've looked at our front lines from different angles and today I want to suggest that the way we stay red dots is by meeting together. We discussed in our first week that us as red dots is us as Christians, lovers of God, followers of Jesus, in and amongst grey dots. And on the second week, we looked at a map and we had to think about how on, on our front lines, wherever we are, we touch other people's lives as red dots. And I think that the way we keep red, or even get red, redder, is by meeting together. Our reading, our reading today, I feel, suggests three ways that meeting together keeps us as red dots. And that's what I want to talk about today. But first and foremost, if you are a young person or a child or, you know, you're young at heart, there are some playing cards around the church. And it might be nice for you to build a house of cards a little bit like this spectacular one I built yesterday. Um, and that just looks like how we are as a church. We build each other and we're all really important foundations. So, first off, this passage talks about hope. Verse 23 says, Hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Now, I've never really known how to define hope, so I looked it up, obviously. And the biblical definition, conf confident expectation. We have hope in Jesus, so we are confidently expectant in Jesus' promises. But how does meeting together help that? How does meeting together help us keep hold of hope, our confident expectations? 
Well, first, how do we lose hope? All you need to do is look out into the world, and really, you can just fall into a little bit of a pit of despair. The Taliban's risen up in Afghanistan again. There's floods and fires all over the world. In some places in the same country, there are earthquakes. That shooting in Plymouth the other day was awful. There's still racism and sexism around the world. All you need is to do is look. So really, why have hope at all? How can we ever muster up any hope when looking at our world? Because we have hope in Jesus. Jesus promises and he keeps his promises. Revelations 1.7. Jesus says he's coming back. Mark 11, 23, Jesus says our faith can move mountains. The biggest mountain in your life, Jesus can move. Jeremiah 29, 11, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your future, and he has a plan to give you hope. Philippians 3, 20, our citizenship is in heaven. Just like we sing, there is a place for me in my father's house. I am a child of God. Isaiah 40, 31, we can run and not grow weary. We can walk and never grow faint. One Thessalonians 5.24, Jesus says he keeps all of his promises. We have a confident expectation in our situation in life. We can have a confident expectation that God will move that mountain. And we can be confidently expectant of a better, safer, and more loving world. Meeting together means that we have a chance to remind one another of that hope that we can have in Christ. A friend may say, I'm depressed and I don't see a way out. I'm stuck in a job that I hate and I don't think that's where God wants me to be and I don't know what to do. Or I work with vulnerable people every day and I'm losing hope because of what I see them go through. And I want to say, friend, there is hope. There is hope in Jesus. Friend, let's pray and ask for breakthrough. So don't let one another give up hope in Jesus. Hope, number one. And second, this passage tells us to spur one another on to good works. Or in other words, encourage one another to be good and loving and kind. I'm not sure if you've ever felt this way, but I find it really tiring to try to remember to be nice and kind and do the nice thing. You know, I find it really tiring to remember not to retaliate or be petty or gossip or put my competitive side down for a bit. Actually, it can be really tiring just to remember to do that kind thing that you know you probably should do, but you're a bit tired and you just all all around just don't really want to do it. You don't really feel like it. Maybe someone hasn't said thank you for something that was actually really inconvenient and really out of your way. Maybe someone's noticed that you're a Christian and know that you try to do everything with love and just as God asks you to do it, And they see that and they try to manipulate that and take more than you can give. Maybe you feel you have so many reasons to doubt yourself and God's capacity to work through you that you you feel like giving up. It can be disillusioning. It's a self-preservation tactic to just be like, no, no more, I'm giving up. I've done that thing that God asked me to do. No one responded. Nobody appreciated it. I'm done, I will not be doing that again, thank you very much. This passage is asking us, don't let one another give up. The verb to spur means to encourage and to give incentive, but it's so much more than that. It's such an active, enthusiastic word. Don't allow one another to give up. I have a little story about from this week. Macy, Sarah and I took our young people on a camp and it was amazing and we loved it. And on the last night, on Thursday, we were praying for our young people to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and it was a beautiful experience. And we'd finished praying for all of our young people, and I was just standing there praying for the room, and I had this feeling that someone was fearful. They were fearful of asking for prayer. They were scared about how they would look to the people around them, but worse yet, how they would look when they got home. So here I am in my doubt spiral, which is where Tippy generally lives, thinking, no, no, I'm probably wrong, maybe I'm projecting, although I'm not projecting because I'm pretty vocal about my faith, although if I'm wrong, I'm going to feel really silly, I don't really know what to do. I'm just going round and round in circles when I feel Macy's hand on my back. Now, you've watched Macy and I worship for about 18 months now, worship together, and we don't hug while worshiping. That's not something that we really do. 
But I thought, you know, I don't know, maybe God is saying something to her that's really emotional and she needs a cuddle. So I just put my arm around her. There you go, Macy. Everything's going to be okay. And back to my self-doubt spiral. But that stopped. There was a break in that. I thought, no. If I am wrong, what's going to happen? If I'm right, I may never even know. Just do it. So I got to the front, I said my piece, put the mic back down, we finished worshipping. Sarah, Macy and I then go out to have a little debrief with our young people. You know, how did you feel? What did you think? Is that something you'd like to try again at home? And somehow me going up to the front came up and Macy said that she was going to shove me to the front of the room, which sounds slightly aggressive, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> But Macy and I were both worshipping with our eyes closed. I didn't tell her that I felt that God was saying something to me. Actually, I didn't even move. I didn't tell her I needed a push. God did that. And that's what this community can provide. Don't doubt yourself. Whatever it is, just do it. Don't doubt God. Trust him, whatever it is. We are a family in Christ, not just to support each other and cuddle each other and, oh, everything's going to be okay, but to encourage, spur, push, shove one another into the good things that God is asking us to do. Macy wanted to shove me. She knew, she knew. God told her. And that's what God wants us to do, even if that means disrupting a quiet worship room. With, with a shove. <laughs> Don't let one another give up on what God is asking of us. So that's hope and encourage one another. And finally, don't give up meeting together. I've spoken this morning about how it can be really disillusioning looking out into the world, and it is, but unfortunately, it can be disillusioning looking here too. We've all witnessed or heard of stories that send our safeguarding alarm, red flashing lights going off in the back of our mind. Maybe you've had an experience at church that has actually left you really shaken. But don't give up. If you can make all the difference in the world out there, you can make all the difference here too. When we meet, we encourage, we advise, we challenge, and we prepare each other for our front lines. And sometimes that just looks like being really excited about God together. This series, we've really emphasized our front lines, you know, work, home, the person you talk to in the toiletry aisle in Tesco's. But that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean that Sundays are completely redundant. In Matthew 18, 20, Jesus says, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Giving up on church, on our church family, it's just closing another window through which God can speak to you. Another window through which God can speak into your life. Because God moves here. The Holy Spirit heals here. The Holy Spirit brings breakthrough here. We may make mistakes along the way, but don't give up. This passage is telling us, again, don't give up on each other. Don't give up on letting God challenge you through your family. So that's be hopeful, encourage one another, and don't give up meeting. When we meet together, we support each other in so many different ways, and that leads to strength and resilience and boldness. So go and be a bold red dot. Go and be resilient. I will not lose hope in, my, in people or my church. In my strength, I will be kind and vulnerable and loving. And I will not give up doing what God is asking me to do. And I will not give up trusting in God when he says he will move that mountain. I will not give up. When you came in today, hopefully you will have received a little red stone. And this is for you to keep and take wherever it will help you most, whether that be at work, in the car. But what I love about this red stone is it can be in and amongst grey boulders, but as long as it's on the surface, it will catch your eye. Together we stay red. Together we stay shiny. 
Maybe we become more red and shinier. God calls us to be a red dot in a sea of grey ones. Be bold. Be bold in your redness. Be bold in your faith. And be bold in the knowledge that you're a child of God, the creator, the God Almighty. Amen. There should be some words on the screen as a prayer together that comes with this series. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of this community. We commend one another to you on our different front lines. Wherever we are, whatever we do, whoever we are, may the Holy Spirit guide us in all things so that we may do God's will in the world, in the service of Jesus Christ, and with great joy. Amen. Thank you. Let's stand to worship together.